I made a video about texturing in Blender, showing how you can texture this exact church. This video is just going to be a follow-up showing how I modeled the church. I think I'm in my modeling era again, where I just start modeling random stuff just for the love of it. And it also helps me build up my library of models so that when I have to make a scene, I don't always have to start from scratch. I also like making my models game engine ready. That way, if I ever get into that, I have somewhere to start from. About a year ago, I lost most of my models in a hard drive crash, so this is a great excuse to rebuild that, and this time I'm backing them up on Patreon and Google Drive. Worst mistake ever, not backing up your projects. And because this model is going to use PBR shaders, I don't have to worry about file size. Uh, anyway, I, I wanted to share this time lapse because I know you will find a lot of great tips and tricks. I think after you learn the basics of modeling, the best way to learn is from watching time lapses. Your brain picks up a lot of things without even needing any explanation. Most tutorials skip over these techniques, mostly because they overlook their importance or they're harder to explain. And also, step-by-step -step tutorials don't perform very well on YouTube, so you're not going to find a lot of explainer videos anymore. Your best chance of finding some great techniques is by watching time lapses, not just mine. There are a lot of great YouTubers out there sharing time lapses like Sketching in Blender and others. If that time lapse was a tutorial, it would likely be three days long, and you wouldn't gain more knowledge than watching the time lapse. I don't plan on making the interior, so details like windows can be separated from the whole building, and the windows are not going to be see through. We can get away with just using a dark reflective material with some grunge and dirt texture on it. When making models like this, just keep in mind you are not modeling for a AAA studio. Most of my models are bought and used by indie game devs and artists. So while I try my best to follow industry standards, most game devs just want meshes that look good and load fast. Take as many shortcuts as you can. Also, delete faces that will never be seen. I know players won't be able to enter this building, so there's no need to add a floor, ceiling, or roof supporting structures like struts, they end up taking up a lot of texture space. Imagine the space the floor would take up in the UV map, that's how much texture space you would be wasting. This means that to get good resolution for your model, you may end up needing to use really large image textures, where a 2K image would have been enough. I've also started using a lot of modifiers to speed up my workflow. For example, the array modifier is great for repetitive structures like columns or arches, and the mirror modifier can save you a ton of time when working on symmetrical designs. And here's a pro tip. Always apply your scale before using certain modifiers like bevel because it affects how they behave. Another habit I've gotten into is saving incremental files. It's not just about avoiding data loss, it's also helpful when you want to go back to an earlier version of your model to try something different. Blender makes it super easy to do this, so there's really no excuse not to. Lastly, don't stress about making everything perfect on the first try. Iteration is key. I've gone back and tweaked parts of this model several times as I worked on it, and that's totally normal. Also, get into the habit of UV unwrapping as you model, especially for parts of your mesh that you'll be reusing, like these vents. If I don't UV unwrap them right away, when I duplicate them, that's another copy I'll have to UV unwrap separately. This can become a big time saver if you stay on top of it from the start. While UV unwrapping may seem simple, it's no joke. It's a time-consuming process, and the more you delay it, the more work you'll have down the line. Anything you can do to speed it up will definitely help in the long run. When you delete faces that the camera won't see or faces that aren't necessary for the final model, you're not only saving precious texture space, but you're also making your UV unwrapping workflow much smoother. After all, that's one less face you'll need to add seams to and pack into the UV map, which can quickly add up, especially in more complex models. Uh, taking the time to clean up and optimize early on will save you a lot of headaches later and help you maintain a more efficient and streamlined modeling process. The more you practice, the faster and more confident you'll get at refining your models. So sit back, Enjoy the process, and I hope you pick up some cool tricks along the way.